Hello everyone, Athelotus here. And okay, today's video is a little bit different. Usually in this channel I modify and overclock motherboards and CPUs to the max. But today's target is some GPUs. And the main topic is BIOS modding. But before I go there, okay, let's assume it is 2003. And you just want to play the latest and greatest games. So you decided to buy a new gaming PC. Well, back then Nvidia actually messed up a bit with the FX series cards. So in the end you decided to ignore the Nvidia options and go for an Ati one. But of course your budget was also limited, so you could not afford a top model, a Nati Radeon 9800. And yeah, in the end you had to go with a lower model. And finally you selected something between a 9200 and a 9600. Yeah, okay, this is an absolute budget model, the 9200, and it is quite weak overall. But this one, the 9600, it was actually a very good mid-range card. Then, okay, you installed some Windows to your new PC. And while this was running quite good with somewhat older games, like the original Arial Tournament, at higher resolutions and settings, or with newer games, this was again not performing that well. After all, all these cards in the end are low to medium end ones. So of course the next logical step is to go here with PowerStrip and try some overclocking. So here we are. Okay, here I have the low end model, the Radeon 9200. And these are the timings. And let's go for something simple, let's say 20 MHz more on the GPU and 10 on memory. Yeah, this looks fine. So I hit apply and yes. And everything looks fine here. No problems whatsoever. But then when you try to run anything 3D. Okay, let's try 3D Mark this time. It might look okay in the beginning. But for sure, sooner or later you will get this crash. Now okay, this goes on Windows 98. But then you go in and try the same in Windows XP. So okay, different operating system and maybe different driver. But okay, again here with power strip. So let's see. And uh, yeah, I don't know. This time it doesn't crash. But there are artifacts all over the place. And okay, this looks very strange. Now I know for sure that this card can't handle these higher clocks. So the question is, okay, what's going on here? And the answer is simple but fascinating. You see, Ati back then decided to clock lock all these models. So the driver is actually the one that causes all this. And this happens every time it detects an inconsistency between the current running clocks and the default clock programmed in the BIOS of the GPU. To my understanding, this clock lock was enforced to all models from the first Radeon 9000 to the 9600, while the higher models were all unlocked. And in general, yeah, I don't know if in whole GPU history this has ever happened again. I mean a major player here on the GPU market locking overclock on purpose. So yeah, today's video is all about that. And of course the steps you have to do to unlock this. And in general there are two ways for that. One is quite simple and uh, software based but only works on Windows XP. And the other is a universal one that basically molds the BIOS of the GPU. So here we are now with Windows XP. And the first tool for today is Ati tool. This is basically an overclocking and stability test tool for Radeon series cards of this era. And as you can see it immediately detects that we have a card of this list. And okay, there is a warning here that these cards are locked against overclocking using the original Catalyst drivers. Now okay, this tool is aware of this fact and in general does not have the problems of power strip. However, there is a note here that basically states that if your card returns to the default clocks after running 3D applications, then you should enable an extra option. So here on settings and then here on the top we go to miscellaneous and you have to click this remove Radeon 9000 series clock lock. Overclocking lock is removed and then we click back. Now this is not the permanent removal of this lock. Once we restart this is lost. Now in theory you can do this in a more permanent way by installing a modded driver as it is also suggested here. However this is not as easy as it sounds. 
You see the link here is for sure now dead. Now either way I managed to find this in the Wayback Machine. And here is a specific snapshot of this where, okay, most of the links are actually working. However, not all. Yeah, this at2mtag.sys links are actually working. But complete soft modded catalyst uh, packs are actually not available. So if you really want to go this route, you have to figure out the correct version of your sys file. And in order to do so, you should go here to the properties, settings, advanced, adapter, properties, driver, driver details. Then scroll down and find this mtag file. So here you have your file version. In this case it's 6614. Then back here and then you scroll down until you find your correct version, 6614. And finally you download this sys file. Now the file you need to replace is located in the system32 drivers folder. And I have done this here already. That's why this is the only non-digitally signed file here. Now if just replacing the file in this folder does not work and you still get the original signed file here then ok, when you install basically your ATI driver and the pottery file here in the C drive is created in this file if you go in down to the driver folder and then this one and finally this you have the setup files of the driver so here I placed the modified file and I also deleted this and replaced it with a copy again of the modified file. So both these are now the new file. Then if you go back and you install this, okay, you get the new driver. Now of course I did all that and yeah, in the end the power strip again still does not work correctly. So you have to use the ATI tool either way. Now I don't think it really makes sense to try and use the modified driver. As here is way easier to go to the settings and just set the flag. Now another interesting thing is that this tool has an integrated stability test. Yeah, it runs this little 3D things here. However, before you go there, it's a good idea to go again on settings, artifact scanning, and make sure that this is placed to the far left side. Then back, and then close the tool and reopen it. Yeah, all the settings are saved here, but either way you have to run ATI tool in every restart. So now you open this scan for artifacts, so let's see, I will increase a bit the memory clocks and set clock. Looks like 184, it's okay. But let's go a little bit higher. 86, probably okay. And yeah, 88, we're starting getting some errors here. Yeah, even a single pixel error resets the timer. I think if you get this to 5 minutes without an error, you're more or less okay. So okay, let's go a little bit lower now, at around uh, 185. And, okay, this looks stable. So time to increase the core frequency. Yeah, 280 is not so good. So maybe 275. Yeah, okay, you have to play a little bit here and there. Maybe with a higher clock you have to decrease the memory a bit. But yeah, okay, more or less you get the idea. Memory clocks will probably give you only a few errors on some pixels here and there. But the GPU clock, if it is too high, might freeze your system altogether. Now my preferred way to overcome this overclock lock is by modding the GPU BIOS using this tool called Rabbit, Radon BIOS Tuner. So here basically you can load your BIOS file and you can change a few things and then save again to another file. Okay, this tool works on Windows XP but you can also run it on a modern PC. In the clocking tab you can set your clocks as you wish. This will be the new default clocks for this card. So the board will now be always overclocked and no other Windows tool is needed. The overclock lock is still there but yeah I mean you don't need to change the clocks anymore so the lock will not activate. Then on the memory tab okay you can also play with the timings of the memory. This is definitely something a little bit more advanced. And in general, maybe it's not a good idea to change the values here. Okay, in theory, if you have higher timings here, your memory might clock higher. And in general, higher clocks will give you better performance. But yeah, okay, again, this is quite complicated and you should only change if you know what you're doing. Or okay, if you have a lot of spare time to waste here tweaking all these values. 
Then features, okay, you can change the TV output from PAL to NTSC. And yeah, that is more or less. On the first, on the device tab, you can change the vendor ID or even the device ID. That means that the card will be detected as another model, but this is not a good idea. And okay, that is more or less with this tool. Then of course the question is how you get your original BIOS file and then how you will program the modified one on the GPU. And one way to grab your original BIOS is by using GPU-Z and then press here, save BIOS. If this works, you are okay. But either way, there is a flash tool that you can run from DOS that does everything. So in the end, for this BIOS mod, you only need a DOS booting device. It might be just a floppy or a USB stick and a modern PC for the rabbit tool. However, it's not a bad idea to first run some Windows XP here as then with the added tool you can just find the limits of your card first. Yeah, it's not a good idea to put unstable overclocking clocks to a GPU BIOS. So the flashing tool is called FlashROM. And of course I will put all these tools in a link on the description. And the first thing you want to run is FlashROM-I for information. This will give you a list of all the added GPUs here on your system. And on the adapter category there is this number 0. So if I had also a PCI card here, that would be two entries, one with number zero and one with number one. And this is very useful if you try to restore a card that you flashed incorrectly. So now the rest of the commands and the most important ones are minus P and minus S. S is used to save your current BIOS to a file. So let's try this first. Flash ROM minus S, zero for the adapter number. And then our file, you don't really need to specify the size. And yeah, here you got it. Dear asterisk.rom. And I have all these files. Yeah, I have done this a lot with many cards. Now in order to program, it's again plus rom minus p, zero for the zero adapter. And then the file that is 9200 original rom. And you are done. Yeah, it's quite straightforward and simple. As long as the clocks you set with the rapid tool are stable, I don't think you have anything to fear here. And even if something goes terribly wrong, you might be able to restore to the original BIOS using another VGA card. Of course, if you have a failed flash here and nothing else works, in the end you will need an external programmer to reprogram the ROM. But I think this is quite unlikely to happen. So that was more or less for this video. I hope you liked this mini tutorial on how to remove this overclock lock and in general how to BIOS mod these ATI cards. Now next time I will try some heavy modding and overclocking on this lowest model here. I actually have two of these and yeah, I have started already doing some stuff here. The results are quite surprising, but this is for sure for the next video. So you know what to do if you don't want to miss all that like comment and of course subscribe so yeah that was for today see you again next time